Do you remember going to Blockbuster? Well, for me it was Hollywood Video Stores in 1998 and renting NFL Blitz. I also remember being in Peter Piper Pizza, playing the arcade version of this game, dropping quarters into the machine so I can drop legs on fools. This will be my retrospective of NFL Blitz using Project 64 to emulate the game. In a time when alternatives to football games were everywhere, there was one game that wasn't going by the traditional simulation style. Number 81. Stop. Stay down, Chuck. What is he doing? Then there was Blitz. <laughs> While NFL Extreme tried to capitalize off of the success of the arcade version of Blitz before it made its way to consoles, it failed to replicate the fun, addictive gameplay that Blitz created. If you're unaware, Blitz isn't 11 on 11, but instead 7 on 7. You have a combination of three receivers, three linemen, and your quarterback on offense, while on defense you will have three defensive linemen, a linebacker, and three defensive backs, or two defensive linemen, a linebacker, and four defensive backs. Depending on what play you select on defense and the goal is to score more than your opponent. You can do that in the air, on the ground, or even kicking. Just be aware that there are no rules. That's right, if you want to hit a receiver before the ball gets to him, you can do it. If you want to Hulk Hogan leg drop someone after the whistle, you can do it. If you want to throw a forward pass behind the line and throw it again, you can do that too. This game used its freedom from traditional rules to make a fast-paced arcade version of football that is still remembered to this day. Considering that it is the first game in the series, the features are lacking quite a bit. There's arcade play where you can choose any of the 30 teams at the time. You can play either against the computer or your friends. The other feature is season play. This is where you take control of one team, go through the entire season, playoffs included, as you journey your way to a Super Bowl trophy. The game is defaulted to 2 minutes per quarter and medium difficulty, which feels quick, but scores can get out of hand quickly. This also means you can finish a season with the playoffs included in under 4 hours, which is good because you may be playing the season repeatedly to try and gain the true ending, which I wasn't able to in my playthrough, but I'll put a link in the comments to the truest ending. Within season play, there isn't a lot of depth either. You can view the season schedule, standings, and stats. There are no individual stats, only team stats, averages of the entire season for completions, passing yards, attempts, rushing yards, sacks, and total wins. Standings are also bare, only showing team records for the season along with home and away records. There are no ties. You can tie, but it will randomly give a win to one team. You can also look through each division, but there's no playoff picture to know who's in each seed going into the final month of the year. While the schedule just shows the score of the previous week and matchups for the following weeks. Play design is a nice added feature. You can create any wacky offensive play by selecting a receiver and guiding them where to go with the routes. If you want a trips bunch to one side, you can. Scheme up a double pass, you can. You can even name these plays anything you want. There's no restriction, there is a lot of freedom in where you can play your receivers, but they still must be contained in the box given to you, and each time they break on their route, you can determine how with a spin move, juke move, or turbo. You can also use these plays in season mode or in arcade mode after creating a profile for them. There are settings in this game to determine the difficulty. You can also increase the time of each quarter, adjust the audio, and even change the button layout to best fit you. There are only three buttons that you use. They all have multiple purposes, such as switching players on defense or passing the ball on offense, lateraling, or using the stiff arm as a runner when paired with the turbo button. The other button is the tackle button, which can be used as a hurdle on offense or diving when double tapped. You can also double tap the turbo button on offense to do a spin move, but doing it too many times will cause a higher chance for you to fumble. I found that out the hard way and through the loading screen tips. What's, what's going on here? Though most of the time playing on offense, you'll be passing the ball either behind the line of scrimmage or deep to score quickly. Throwing is also done differently compared to its competition. Receivers no longer have icons above their heads, but are instead highlighted. If you move the quarterback to the left, it highlights the leftmost receiver, to the right, the rightmost receiver, and if you stand still, it'll highlight the centermost receiver. Sometimes this can be an issue if your offensive line doesn't hold up, forcing you to move one way and having to throw quickly the opposite way. Another issue is if you pick a play where all the receivers are bunched up, it's hard to select the one that you want to throw towards. 
So what happens is you end up only choosing about three plays on offense that you know where the receivers will be, making it easier if pressure does show up. This is a problem because you have two pages of plays to select, nine plays on each page, making 18 in total. Out of those, maybe less than a handful of plays you'll pick because some are just easier to use than others. The bomb if they choose to play man coverage, X cross if they're playing man but you have no time to throw, and finally split, two options in the flat if they continue to bring pressure sure you can get it out quickly. I talked about how you can do double passes if the passes are behind the line of scrimmage. This helps a lot if there's pressure, but something I didn't know you can do is a triple pass. I've never done it, but when the computer did it against me, my world was rocked. Now, just because you can pass a lot doesn't mean that running the ball isn't important. If your offensive line can hold up, you can take off with it as the quarterback. All the players have the same amount of speed. I never felt like I was slower than anyone until my turbo ran out. If you do choose to throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, you can take off with it instead of passing again, and it will register it as a run. While I was playing, I opted to run the ball more than I threw. It can be extremely overpowering considering sometimes the defenders just sit there and wait for you to move. Sometimes they just take terrible angles at you. On the defensive side, things get a bit more complicated. You have the option to choose zone, man, or blitz. I don't really recommend blitzing as it will most likely leave someone wide open for an easy pass. Zone coverage can be useful at times. Defenders will sit in a zone covering whoever goes into it, then passing them off to the next defender. But there are many holes in the middle, meaning the computer can slowly work their way down the field. Man coverage was my go-to option, letting you lurk the field as a safety to pick off passes. Interceptions were hard to come by, at least for me. The computer didn't have any issues. But having the dive button and the jump button, the same button, made it hard for me to time interceptions and I ended up dolphin diving all over the place. If you're lucky, you might be able to knock the ball out of the receiver's hands and get an interception. But if your team is up, good luck with that since rubber banding makes it difficult to have any blowout wins. Rubber banding or dynamic game difficulty balancing happens when the CPU opponent is behind, they get a boost to help tie the game back up, never allowing the human control team to blow them away. If you played a blitz game, you know when it's there. Every time I had a lead in this game, my offensive line suddenly forgot how to block, my receivers would get beat up on their routes, and drop passes right into the defender's hands or fumble the ball. Same can be said on the defensive side. Every receiver can break free from their man coverage or my defenders won't cover them. The quarterback will have all the time in the world to throw. Even if you choose to run zone, eventually someone will get free. Even if you manage to correctly bring pressure to the quarterback instantly, the CPU will get it out quickly. And when you're trying to tackle the computer, they will spin out of almost every tackle or jump out of every dive you attack attempt. The same can almost be said when you're down. It becomes incredibly easy to throw the ball down the field, sometimes to covered players and they'll somehow manage to make the play. The offensive line will hold up and it just feels like a switch went off and set the game to the easy difficulty. Even though I dislike the rubber banding in this game, I think the thing I dislike more than that is where they mark you down on the field. It's a small complaint, but I'm certain I crossed that goal line there. Going back to the difficulty, I did try it on easy, and yes, it's absolutely easy. Now, when I tried it on hard, I'd be surprised if anyone can win against the computer on this setting, because it's insane. I had no time to throw, turnovers were happening all the time, and I couldn't kick field goals because it was always blocked. Speaking of kicking, the game allows kicks of any length as long as you're in your opponent's half of the field, meaning midfield and closer. There's a meter that you must time a button press to in order to accurately kick the ball. Turns out, even if you kick a perfect kick, you can still miss. Now before I end the video, I do want to talk about how great the player models look. I understand that this is 1998, but when you look at its competitors, these players look phenomenal. I also don't know if it's because I grew up during this era of football, but the uniforms look so clean. Yes, they're all buffed up looking like big bad booty daddies, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It has its own identity of what it wants to be and separates itself from the rest. When you see these player models, you know exactly what game they're from. I am disappointed that all the stadiums look the same. 
that's it for the video. If you stuck all the way through, I appreciate it very much, and if you enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. It helps the channel grow, and it lets me know you want more of these videos. Please consider leaving a comment as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this game.